All right, welcome to Wyoming. We absolutely loved our time in Nebraska. Thank you to the folks of Nebraska for, you know, having us have such a fantastic time. We met so many really nice people, visited some really interesting places. We had no idea how much we were gonna love Nebraska. We are 100% gonna plan to go back and spend more time there. Yeah, that's for sure. But now, we're excited to be back in Wyoming. Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Stacy. I'm Tom, and we're RV Texas, y'all. We are native Texans and full-time RVers who are all about exploring the great state of Texas and beyond one campground at a time. We're on a mission to experience life, not just live it, and we're bringing you along for the fun. In 2018, we sold our house, our business, and got rid of most everything we owned to hit the road and see America. Our home is a 33-foot RV named Freedom. We installed an extreme solar and lithium setup so now we can just about live anywhere with our dog Star and our cat Astro. Every day is a new adventure, so join us as we RV America, y'all. So this is one of the things that we love about being full-time RVers. Back home in Houston today, it is expected to be 104 degrees with a heat index, feels like temperature of 114. Yesterday, they set a record uh, for any day in July in history, recorded history with 105 as the actual real temperature. We're here at Kurt Gowdy State Park in Wyoming. We're at 7,300 feet of elevation roughly and we've learned that's a key is elevation and low humidity and it's expected to be a high today of 70 or 72 so we are loving that for July weather and that's one of the reasons why we love this lifestyle because it allows us to chase 70 degrees as they say and if something's going to be uncomfortable we can move on to somewhere where it might be a little bit more nice uh, weather wise. Our plans this year were going to take us into Utah. We were really excited about them, but the more weather forecasts that were coming out, it sounded like it was gonna be probably record heat in a lot of Utah this summer. We were gonna be dry camping uh, in a lot of the national parks. We decided that we're gonna do some of that, but we've replaced a chunk of it with Colorado instead, so we can hopefully find some uh, cooler weather this summer. But that is the key. Elevation and low humidity mixed together make for beautiful weather. Buckhouse Barn Grill out. They say they've got a great prime rib. I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> oh man, that was really good. The food was really good. And uh, nice folks. And guess what? They had Schonerbach beer up here. How about that? We're all the way up between Cheyenne and Laramie, Wyoming. And we saw the sign, they have Schonerbach. That's, that's pretty neat. Little taste of home. We've made the short drive into Cheyenne, Wyoming this morning, and the first stop is gonna be the historic train depot, which has a museum, but also it's kind of what we understand, the place to get information, and also to uh, start using our passes that we bought. We'll tell you more about that later. So 
in the historic train depot here in Cheyenne, right next to the train museum and where you can get tickets to ride the trolley, you'll find the Accomplice. And they are a restaurant and a brewery and super nice folks, really good food. Huckleberry ice cream. Oh yeah, that's good. It's really good. Okay, so we came into Cheyenne again today and uh, we ate here, ate lunch at the Metropolitan, which it was a very nice place. And uh, Stacy and I each had salads. Yep, we're eating a little healthy these days. Um, and it was perfect because Caddy Corner right behind Stacy, who's got the camera, is where we parked. And when you come in during the week, it's only $4, $4 for the day at the park in the parking garage. So not too bad uh, for a full day of parking. And, and now we are headed right across the street to a museum that's on our pass. Now I did want to mention we, we got a pass that was only $25 a person. And uh, we found that pass when we were getting the tour bus pass and we were gonna take the tour bus and the tour bus was 15 bucks anyway. And their extended pass gave us several other attractions we could go into as well as the tour bus, which we strongly recommend. They, uh, it was it was awesome. They really told us a lot about uh, Cheyenne and, and the history of Cheyenne. So and all the buildings and everything. So that's well worth taking, and it's well worth the pass too because they're some of the main attractions anyway. So if you're going to be here a full day or maybe two or three days, the pass is good for seven days. So. Uh, we thought it was well worth it. Now we're gonna go get some more of our money's worth by going to the uh, museum. What's the name of it? The Nelson Museum. The Nelson Museum. So here we go. So here we are next up on our museum tour of Cheyenne, the Nelson Museum of the West. The Nelson Museum of the West, amazing collection. Yeah, it is, and it wasn't busy at all. I mean, I can't believe there's not more people going to these museums. Now, it's part of the pass that we bought, but if you don't have the pass, it's $5 for adults to get in. I mean, well worth it. that's nothing, and for the price of oh, that but museum. Oh, first of all, it's one man's collection. Yes. It's important to say, and it is enormous. And he is still alive and still around. Um, he he uh, has an office in the museum. We, I, I saw him, but we didn't get a chance to meet him. But yeah, he's got an incredible library of his own in there, an office. And right behind us is the military museum. That he also owns, again, his and, collection. And right across the street, after you tour the Museum of the West, you just ask them to take you over to the uh, Military Museum. It's right across the street. Yeah, it's, Oh my gosh. It, it, it is part of the admission of the other museum. And you have, I, I guarantee it, you've never seen so many uniforms in phenomenal shape of all wars and times and knowing who they are too who's they are generals brigadier generals four-star generals five-star generals yeah it's a, wow it's incredible now we saw a great military museum in savannah yeah and i'll link to that video in case you missed that on our tour of savannah but this one is also amazing stacy got a picture of me next to uh general colin powell his uniform his uniform yeah. i mean how awesome They have is a uniform that? from General Patton, from General MacArthur. I mean, the list goes on. It is an amazing collection. So this is a two-for-one museum visit. 
you definitely got to do it. We spent a good probably two and a half to three hours between the two. Um, yeah, and amazing, I, and it's right here in downtown Cheyenne. Easy to get to. Yeah, we walked right to it from where we parked it, and when I say walked, it literally is a hundred yards from where we parked. Two blocks, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it was. I mean this is awesome. When you come here, you know, do these museums. We want these museums to stay around, you know, and and I'm really surprised there's not more folks here. But believe me, you'll enjoy it if you stop. Absolutely. Put it on your list. Yeah. <laughs> so we got out of the Nelson Museums. We had time to do one more today. There's a free museum, the Wyoming State Museum. It's about a 10 minute walk. And right as we're getting here, it starts to pour rain. <laughs> we're under a tree right now. And this is the museum right here behind us. We're going to go in. We'll let you know how it is. <laughs> There's the Capitol building. Oh, yeah. So this is interesting, you know, we often refer to a bison as a buffalo. Well, according to this, and I've heard this somewhere before, but uh, it says that although they're frequently called buffalo, the American bison is not actually related directly to a true buffalo, which would be a water buffalo or an African buffalo. It says the two branches of the bovine family last shared a common ancestor nearly 10 million years ago. Yeah, that's quite a bit of difference. So this is number 99 in the fleet of Yellowstone touring wagons built in 1890s. Uh, it carried folks, it was one of a hundred wagons at their height that would carry folks through a five-day tour of Yellowstone National Park. And uh, it would see 11 people and they would carry their luggage because they would stay in the hotels that were built by the railroads because the railroad company realized the opportunity to attract tourists to Yellowstone. This one somehow found its way to Laramie, Wyoming, which is nearby, and that's where they, no one knows how it got there, but that's how it ended up here at the museum in Cheyenne. Pretty amazing. And we've seen one other of these. Oh yeah, we saw a Yellowstone tourist wagon uh, at Pioneer Village in Nebraska. And I'll link to that video because, oh my gosh, was that an amazing museum. some of our best national parks are around. So they have exhibits on Grand Teton National Park, as well as Yellowstone National Park here within the museum. It's pretty cool. So the Wyoming State Museum, totally free. Yeah. Two stories. And yeah, fun way to spend an hour or so. It was, it's got a a lot of the Wyoming history, a lot of, lot of Indian, cowboy and Indian stuff, and, and uh, yeah, and I mean, just park national stuff. park stuff. We showed some of that. You know, it was, it was really neat. And let's see, we also got us, believe it or not, in the gift shop, some Wyoming coffee. Yay. Yes, we'll be giving that a try tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, definitely worth a stop when you're here in Cheyenne. Cheyenne is very walkable, by the way. We parked the car when we got into town and we've just walked everywhere and it's been really easy. Yep, now we're headed to uh, maybe a brewery here in town or something. I think that's what we're gonna look for. We'll, we'll see. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. So along with our uh, 
ticket that we bought to get us into several of the museums and attractions. They also have a, what they call, uh, Buck Off Cheyenne Savings Pass, and you download it for free, you give them your email. One of the deals is a you pay for a flight, a beer flight, and you get a free pint. So that's how we like to do things anyway. I like flights, Tom likes pints. We are gonna check out Black Tooth Brewing. And by the way, we walked here too. Fitting to end our stay here in Cheyenne with a visit to a big boy. This is big boy number 4004. There were 25 big boys built between 1941 and 1944, somewhere in there. This big boy was built in 1941 and it served until 1958 with its final run being from Cheyenne to Laramie where it was stored for several years before coming back to make its home here in Holiday Park. You'll find it at the end of 17th Street here in Cheyenne. These were the biggest stem, steam engines ever built. 25 were built. There are eight remaining that are on display around the country. And there's one that's housed here in Chey Cheyenne down at the railroad depot by the museum that actually goes out on tours. It came through Texas a few years ago. You might remember and maybe you saw it. So, yeah, when you're in Cheyenne, it was, uh, you know, Union Pacific that started the town of Cheyenne. So it feels fitting to come and pay tribute to Union Pacific's big boy. And by the way, this train, when it was built, and it is massive, it cost $265,000 to build. That's pretty amazing. But that was a lot of money in 1941. Welcome to our campsite here at Kurt Gowdy State Park in Wyoming. This is site number 10 in the Jerry's Haven campground. It is a 30 and 50 amp electric only site. Um, there's a lot to share about this park, so I'm going to try to do it concisely. First of all, this is a great location for visiting both Cheyenne and Lar Laramie, Wyoming, because we are smack dab in the middle of those two, about 20 miles to either city. Uh, we visited Cheyenne a couple of times on this trip. We had meant to make it over to Laramie. We had meant to spend more time in Cheyenne, but and we meant to do more hiking here, but six days was not enough, <laughs> I'm here to tell you. Um, so, and we actually thought we had an additional day, uh, but we did not. And I gotta tell you that RV Trip Wizard saved our bacon on that because yesterday it sent me a reminder that we were traveling today and I thought it was next, the day, I thought it was tomorrow. So luckily we had to cut short our plans and kind of try to cram a few things in, but uh, really liking Trip Wizard. So I'll put a link in the description if you haven't checked that out. But let me tell you about this park. So first of all, yeah, location is fantastic. Um, this is a long pull through site. Now the sites here, there's a few things for you to understand. This is a pretty good sized state park and there are sites all around, there are campgrounds all around the lake and the water and all throughout the park. Many of them are dry camping. Most of them are dry camping. There are a few sites like ours here in Jerry's Haven uh, and a few of the other campgrounds you can get electric hookups and you run off of your fresh water tank. There is one campground here within the park where you can actually have city water as well, electric and city water. Um, for the most part, you're going to be on gravel roads. Um, coming into the park, you're on pavement and it's very well maintained. I don't want you to be worried about Wyoming 210, which is the road, or Happy Jack Road, which is the road that brings you here from Laramie or Cheyenne. It's in great shape, very easy for an RV. You come into the park on paved roads. The, the gravel road starts after uh, Jerry's Haven and this first group of campsites. So if you're worried about that, you can get one of these first group of campgrounds and you'll be okay. Uh, the campground loops are gravel, the sites are gravel, but they're in really nice shape. 
Let me swing you around here so you can see our view. The views are amazing. Now, another important point here, they don't have a lot of water fill stations within the park. There is one that's right across in another uh, campground from Jerry's Haven. Jerry's Haven, by the way, is not gonna show up on Google Maps at this point. Uh, it's a newer campground within the park, but it's right here the first section of campgrounds as you come into the park. Uh, we've had a great view. There's also, there are, uh, there's no dump station in this park. Uh, so that's an important thing to remember. Um, they do have uh, restrooms. There are regular flush toilets and pay showers at the headquarters during uh, office hours. And then around the park, they've got pit toilets or vault toilets or basically outhouses, but they've been super clean the entire time we've been here. So that's not a problem. Um, yeah, we've really enjoyed our stay here. We are next week going to share with you one of the most amazing hikes we've ever taken. Here at Kirk Gowdy, we hiked to the Hidden Falls and oh my gosh, guys, it is amazing. You've got to see it. So make sure you come back for that. We had meant to do more hiking, but like I said, six nights just was not enough. So hope you've enjoyed this video and the trip to Kirk Gowdy State Park and local Cheyenne. We will definitely come back to this area. There is so much more to explore. Until next time, y'all, safe travels and happy camping. And we'll see you back here next week. Bye.